don't even know if I can uh, copy what Corey did. That was impressive. Um, my name is Ashley, and I'm an 18-year-old also from Edmonton, Alberta. It is so great to be here in Banff, and it's a wonderful opportunity to share my vision for Canada through the Walrus Talk. I was told to talk about what is important for me and what I see for Canada. And I decided to talk about youth involvement because that is my passion. And as I started writing this speech, it became really hard and I couldn't quite do it. And I realized it's because it's not only about youth, it's about everyone. It's about the intergenerational support that we get from our community and the people in it. So now my speech is no longer focused on youth involvement, but it is focused on the mentorship that we have within our communities and with the youth. So what is intergenerational mentorship? Because I didn't really know what that meant either when I was younger. So to me, it means that the elder mentors the young in relationship, but also the young mentors the elder. It's a dual uh, way of doing um, learning from each other and each other's experiences. And this year we are celebrating Canada 150, as we all clearly know. And we are celebrating our current and historical milestones in our people and in our communities and in our diversity. But we are also celebrating our future endeavors, hopes, values, and dreams that we share as a nation. And Canada is 150 years young. We are just a baby as a country, but we have a lot of history before our 150 years. And that plays a big role in who we are today. We have, we have learned from our past mistakes and our successes. We are considered a baby as a country and we fell down. We got bruises and scrapes on our hands and knees, but we stand back up strong. And that is very important because we are young, but we are incredibly advanced in many ways from our scientist who works for um, space and exploring that, that's impressive. Uh, <laughs> um, but we are very advanced from our education, our culture, our language, technology, and inter interconnectivity. The list goes on and on, and yet there's so many ways for improvement. But keep in mind that it is the advancement that we have done so far that makes Canada so beautiful, so strong, but the ability to be ready for the future. Every morning I wake up and I ask myself the same question, what am I going to learn today? Am I going to learn that I made a mistake? Probably, because I'm really flawed. <laughs> but there's a method behind my madness. It's of asking this question. Maybe it's, it's asking questions. Maybe it's at my work, my school, meeting for my various youth councils, and I'm on a lot, um, and cadets. Or maybe it's at my volunteer commitments, wherever lights take me. My goal is to learn something new and ask questions. This is what opens the door for me. This is what allows me to seek out new and innovative ways to continue my education and learning about the world I live in, the people in it, but most importantly, Canada and where we have came from. It builds my knowledge and network. One of the greatest things I love to do is learning about people's stories and passions. It allows me to see a bigger picture, a picture with so many little details, but it has such a bigger meaning and purpose. I couldn't do this without my engagement in my community and the mentorship I receive. Uh, way back when I was in grade eight, and that was only five years ago, may I remind you, <laughs> I learned that the word Canada comes from Haran Erekus word cantina, meaning village. And although the literal definition of the word village does not describe Canada, the symbolic meaning does. A village is known for its unity within a duality. Uh, home and security, growth and tradition, young and old. The experience of intergenerational mentorship is what allows the village to grow with the future, but also incorporates the tradition and experience of others. Canada provides so many opportunities to build on this foundation of intergenerational mentorship. From our schools to just meeting people or spending time with our families. It's the people that we meet from the diverse walks of life. When we step outside of our bubbles, we can expand our ideologies. We meet people and from like newcomers, indigenous cultures, right down to youth and trying different foods and learning about their culture. We have the chance to have wisdom passed down to us, but learn with the future. 
All this is done with the fabulous and intelligent change makers that resides here in Canada and also in this room. There are day-to-day -day people who already have this passion and kindness for what they do. It is these people that inspires me to give back to the community and to help youth to become the change makers now and into the future. From an early age, I've always been an advocate for youth involvement and youth rights. My childhood wasn't the easiest, but it was the but those experiences what fuels my passions to educate, support, mentor, and empower young Canadians, but to also learn from them as well. When someone finds their passion, they can accomplish great things. My goal is to support youth to find their passion and to grow with it. Over 16,000 young people applied to be on the Prime Minister's Youth Council. That is a lot of people, a lot of youth who are passionate, who are involved, and who wants to be involved, who have a story and a passion who are ready to make changes. And they are already making community, real community change. I am lucky. I am one of the 26 Canadian youth who has been selected for the Prime Minister's Youth Council. And no, I do not have Justin Trudeau's number, and I have not touched his hair. <laughs> but on the serious side, this is an opportunity for myself and my fellow co-counselors to share the ideas and concern of youth directly to the Prime Minister, but also the Cabinet and other government officials. It's in, in order for this to happen and share the ideas and concerns, it starts with a conversation in our communities. And often these conversations are really difficult because we're indulging into conversations that affects us and everyone here in Canada. It is how we can make a movement towards multi-generational impact across Canada. By encouraging youth to get involved from an early age, we will ensure that the next generation of adults and seniors will be involved. Canada's an ever-changing place. In 150 years from now, I hope that the kids and the young Canadians no longer have to face and overcome the barriers and stereotypes that we still have today that I had to face and still facing. That they can go into their communities and gain the transferable skills that they need without being told that we are immature or inexperienced, to develop the habit of being active community members, creating a strong network, but most importantly, having the support to make an impact and make a change. I've done a lot of talking up here, way too much, and I really want to learn about you because that's something I'm very passionate about. So I'm gonna get everyone to do an activity with me. Close your eyes, no peeking. Raise your hands if you've ever volunteered or donate it within, the, within your life. Perfect, now close your eyes again, because I know some of you guys peaked, and, open, and raise your hands if you have volunteered within the last six months. That's impressive, that's awesome, because a lot of people out there forget to volunteer or f don't have enough time. I've been busy, trust me, and sometimes I forget to, and that's okay, but it's creating that habit and going out into the community to make a difference. So as we celebrate Canada 150, we are celebrating our future endeavors that we have to embark on together. So my challenge for you is to continue learning while staying true to yourself, to be open and to learn from everyone, to develop and sustain multi-generational impact within your community while encouraging youth to find their passion and to be active, engaged members of the community. Thank you.